General Maverick reporting for the RSSF from Ace Combat 7, Skies Unknown. Um, good news is that I finally got to set up uh, my VKB Gladiator Omni Throttle, which I'm using on my left hand, and my Logitech right hand uh, joystick uh, 3D Extreme Pro. Uh, it's I I. I unbinded the, the, some of the controls so it's not drifting anymore uh, so I can control my plane way better so hopefully I can get to do this mission way easier you can find as far okay. as the chaos we find ourselves in these days it's difficult to say which side pulled the trigger first Arugia deployed an automatic intercept system with drones Osea implemented long-range attacks to bypass them, so Arugia decided to sabotage Osea's communications and navigation technology. Arugia couldn't launch a satellite themselves, but they were still able to hack the software of the Osean transmission and navigation systems. Before Osea even noticed, half of their satellites were hijacked. That's when things got ugly. In an attempt to knock out each other's capabilities, Both forces launched fighters loaded with anti-satellite missiles at the same time. Only military satellites were targeted. However, their destruction created a debris field in orbit which wiped out scores of other satellites, both private and government owned. What kept the world relatively sane up to that point had been free-flowing data and information. But now, those were gone. All that remained was chaos and confusion. Ooh. Government and civilian broadcasts and transmissions were cut off. The flow of information had ceased. Forces on both sides of the conflict now found themselves unable to communicate with their superiors. Many of the smaller countries annexed by Arugia and yearning for their independence seized the opportunity and started their own uprisings. As for why some of Osea's military decided to break off from the main force and continue on their own, I have no idea. Perhaps there was some sort of dispute over the chain of command. The continent that had once seen wars that were only fought between Osea and Rugia was now full of numerous conflicts between rival leaders vying for power. Insurgencies were everywhere. I even heard a rumor that a group of Osean convicts had rebelled. Rumors. It never ceased to amaze me that even at a crazy time like this, something as trivial as a rumor could find its way here. Communications from corporate were cut off. Apparently, the entire computer network was down. It was a wise decision to make our drones autonomous with AI instead of being radio controlled. Wise and forward thinking. Even with their GPS offline, they can still use their sensors to navigate as long as they're working properly. I'm sure the drones are still working perfectly, following their mission orders to the letter. I wish I could upload Mihai's new data to them, but without a connection, I can't upload the software to the active drones. The new ones we're making, though, there should still be enough time to upgrade those before they're activated. I'll be taking the data I've acquired away from the front lines now. Oh, and I'll be taking the girls too. I told my assistant Masa it was time to get Mihai's granddaughters ready to leave here. She's not much older than the girls, but she has a way about her, and I'm sure she won't have any trouble with them. I saw a plane flying off in the distance. I imagine it was looking for a safer place. The plane had a rose emblem on it. Arusia's communication networks have been down since their satellites were destroyed. Unfortunately, we are experiencing trouble too. All of Yuzia has been affected, and we don't know when things will be back up and running. We're not even sure if this is Yuzia's doing. Still, 
We will follow the strategy that was originally planned and move on to the next operation after liberating Farbanti. Let's get to it. Since the war began, we've been receiving communications in secret from an officer in the Erusian army. With the capital under our control, Erusia's radical element is losing support quickly, affecting the balance of power. HQ is thinking of using the military officer as a way to gain leverage to settle peace negotiations. The officer is currently hiding in the outskirts of Anchorhead Bay, having joined up with support dispatch from the Ocean Army. The plan is that they'll take a standard vehicle to a rendezvous point at a harbor in the east part of the city, where a helicopter will be waiting. I would like the new Strider Squadron to provide escort for the officer. Cyclops will remain at the base on standby to serve as defense. With the communication network currently down in the capital, I very much doubt Arusia will be able to mount a regimented counterattack. However, it is likely that Arusia's intelligence department and the remaining forces who are aware of the officer's movements will interfere. Keep a close eye on the officer and make sure he stays safe. Our victory in Farbanti has given us a golden opportunity to finally end this war. Be safe out there. Take note that our satellite-based IFF has become unreliable following the recent communications failure. As such, target ID will be done by processing the images from the infrared cameras on your aircraft. Objects will initially appear as unknown on your HUDs, but will be ID'd once you close in on them for a set period of time. That was long. Six minutes almost. Or more. Yeah, seven. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, I got a VKB Gladiator Omnithrottle Premium for my left hand. And I'm waiting for a Verpil Constellation Alpha Prime for my right hand. But uh, for now, I'm using my Logitech. You can see the video of unboxing and assembling my Omnithrottle uh from vkb i did it yesterday uh, the quality is not very good i didn't know i need 50 subscribers to do the uh, mobile uh, live stream so uh, i had to use my webcam from my from my computer which is terrible and it's old and the quality is very bad so if you don't want to watch it that's fine too anyways let's get going because this is getting way too long uh, i finally mapped the bottom for the skip things and all that so next time I can skip everything I'm gonna use the same uh, plane and configuration Strider squadron you're clear to don't taxi. know if it's the best or not but... now I'm not gonna touch any of my both joysticks and you will see how the plane doesn't go to the right or left to the right. unidentified Ocean craft this is Captain Carl of the Ocean Army are oh. you here for the escort you're not the squadron I was expecting. Are you really friendly? It's over. This is Longcaster. Airborne warning and control system for the Ocean Long Range Strategic Strike Group. Captain Carl, they're on our side. And those two pilots we've heard about must be here too. Okay, I hope you're right. See? Longcaster. Does it go left? Really Does it go right? Does it straight? Finally. The army is fighting itself. There's no guarantee the Oceans won't shoot us in this confusion. We'll image process the unknowns caught in your cams to identify friend or foe. The process will be faster if you get a close-up, well-centered image. Meanwhile, we just run if they shoot us, right? Affirmative. Always identify your target before you fire. How do I know if I have to? Or is something I'll never get used to. But tonight has been a total shock. The city under martial law. Gunfire and the roar of jets echoing through the streets. Did I shoot that? Give me Strider Squadron's IDs. Oh, and uh, hand me that sandwich. Uh, Bandit has a lock. Ooh. Go for that again. Let me see. Ah, uh, that's not the path. Entering I guess I gotta follow the road. Buildings will block your line of sight. Make sure to keep track of your objective. How this war ends depends on this mission. I'm counting on you. We understood. Bandit has a lock. It's a Russian military. Target destroyed. Strider 
Fire Squadron. Identify the unknowns along the route. I don't know. How am I supposed to identify them? Just by flying by? I did fly by those guys and they didn't turn green or red. They're just red. Okay. I'm gonna go for those guys instead. <laughs> That's cool. Turn. Uh, I'm loving the Omni Throttle. Feels amazing. They're very hidden. These guys. Green, that's not green. Right, what about that one? That one's an ally? Oh, green is not ally. Okay, that's done. Why, so much easier with the Omni Throttle? What about this guy? Check this guy. Are you friendly? Where did he go? Dang it. Your plane will ice up if you stay in there too long. Giant four, box two. So good to be able to use a aim. Are you friend? No, you're not. Hold 
Get these guys. Boom. <laughs> hey, he's not dead. I thought he was dead. Oh, come on. This thing has so many bottoms, I'm so happy about it. The only thing is that my hands sweat a lot. <laughs> This city at night. To us, it's no different than magic or alchemy. Airplanes are meant to be flown by human beings. Those of you listening in, am I wrong? We're heading towards Gruner Park. Rendezvous point is a helipad on this man made island. We'll ditch the car and take the helicopter from there. Which way? There's yellow. It's friends or foes? Sorry, guy. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> oh, he was a friend. Where'd you go?
<laughs> so much easier. Wait, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm gonna go for this one. Do these guys? Oh no 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 no! no. Oh! <laughs> I didn't see the bridge. <laughs> I'm still getting used to the controls. It's very um, tricky to use the left hand and the right hand. Plus, I gotta, I gotta switch. I wanna switch one of the missile launchers. I think uh, I wanna put it in the second button of the Omni Throttle. So as I'm pushing for the for the gun, if I push deeper, I can throw a missile. I wanna do that. Um, anyways, this is good enough for this episode. Uh, I'll keep trying. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, check out the links in the description for Twitter merchandise official of the official merchandise of the RSSF. And please leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Maybe consider subscribing. Uh, again, thank you very much for watching. Jerome Maverick out.